the revolt of 1857 was the most dramatic instance of traditional India's struggle against foreign rule. But it was not a sudden occurrence. It was the culmination of a century-long tradition of fierce popular resistance against British domination. Pinch of the loss of independence, foreign intrusion into local autonomy, introduction of administrative innovations, excessive land revenue demands and disruption of economy was felt at different points of time which caused disturbances mostly of a local nature. Establishment of British power in India caused discontentment, resentment and resistance at every stage among the people of India. The popular resistance took three broad forms. Civil rebellions, tribal uprisings and peasant movements. Now let us have a look on these resistances and understand the causes, the time period and the leaders involved. Uprisings of the Bengal region Sanyasi rebellion which broke out in the year 1770 was caused due to imposition of restrictions on sannyasis like access to holy places and prohibition of collection of arms. This was followed by the incidental famine which turned the sannyasis against the British. The sannyasis organized raids on the company's factories, state treasuries and valiantly fought against the company's armed forces. The prolonged rebellion was later suppressed by Warren Hastings. Chaur uprising broke out in the regions of Midnapur in 1778-79. It was led by Dudran Singh and was an armed retaliation against British who insultingly called the tribes and oppressed peoples at chores, meaning thieves. Economic distress, enhanced land revenue demands and famine compelled these tribesmen to take up arms. Ultimately, by means of bloody repression and the usual policy of divide and rule, British were able to crush the Chaur Rebellion. Ho tribal peasants of Chota Nagpur, Bihar, revolted in 1820 against the British rulers and the local money lenders and zamidars. Dislocation in the socio-economic living pattern, followed by forced alienation of their lands, led to discontentment. The zamidars and the Raja of Porahad appealed to the British for help, and the Ho uprising was ruthlessly crushed. Coal's uprising was centered around Chota Nagpur region of Bengal. Transfer of land from coal headmen to outsiders like Sikh and Muslim farmers forced the Coals to take up arms. In 1831, the coal rebels killed about a thousand outsiders. The order was only restored after a large-scale operation. The Ahums revolt was against the company's authorities of non-fulfillment of pledges like withdrawal from their territory after the conclusion of the Burman War. The British, instead of restoring territories, incorporated them into the company's dominion which sparked off a rebellion in 1828. The rebellion was led by Gomdhar Konvar. The war ended with restoration of Upper Assam to Maharaja Purandar Singh Narendra and a part of the kingdom was restored to the Assamese Raja. The Santhals who lived in the area between Bhagalpur and Rajmahal, known as Damniko, was oppressed by outsiders like the revenue officials, money lenders, police and the landlords whom they called Dikus. Excessive rent demands by Zamidars compelled people to leave their ancestral homes and settle in the plains skirting the Rajmahal hills. The prostrated Santhals rose into revolt in 1855.
The Khasi Rising, which took place in the hilly region of Khasi between Garo and Jentia Hills, was occupied by the East India Company with a plan to link up the Brahmaputra Valley with Silhat. Tirat Singh, the ruler of Nanklo, resented the intrusion into his territories. He won over the support of the Garos, the Kamtis, and the Singpos in a bid to drive away the lowland strangers. The insurrection developed into popular revolt against the British rule. Pagal Pantis, a semi-religious sect founded by Karam Shah and other disciples of the Muslim Fakir Majnu Shah, lived in the northern districts of Bengal. Karam Shah took up the cause of the tenants against the operation of the Zamidars. In 1825, Tipu, the successor of Karam Shah, captured Sherpur and assumed royal power. After the death of Tipu Shah, Janku and Dobraj Pathor took up the leadership and organized another revolt in the year 1852. Farizis were followers of a Muslim sect founded by Haji Saraitullah of Faridpur in eastern Bengal. Saraitullah's son, Dadumia, took upon himself to expel the English intruders from Bengal. The Farizi disturbance continued from 1838 to 1857. The Khond Uprising started in 1837 to 1856. It included tribals from Ghumsar, Chinaki Medi, Kalahandi and Patna. The movement was led by Chakra Bisoi and later by Radhakrishna Dandasena. The revolt was against the government's attempt to suppress human sacrifice, introduction of new taxes by the British and the influx of Zamidars and Sahukars into their areas which was causing the tribal's untold misery. Now, let us have a look on the uprisings of Western India. The Koli Risings The Kolis lived in the regions of Aravali, Vindhya and Satpura. They rose up in rebellion against the company's rule in 1829, in 1846 and once again during 1844-48. They resented the imposition of company's rule, which brought with it large-scale unemployment for them and the dismantling of their forts. Kutch rebellion began with the British interference in the eternal feuds of the Kutch region of Gujarat. In 1819, British defeated and deposed the Kutch ruler Rao Bharamal in favor of his infant. The British placed a resident to govern the area as the de facto ruler with the help of a regency council. The news of the British reverses in the Burma war emboldened the chiefs to rise in revolt and demand the restoration of Bharamal. Vaghira Rising Resentment against the alien rule, coupled with the exactions of the Gaikwad of Baroda, supported by the British government, compelled the Vagira chiefs of Okha Mandal to take up arms. The Vagiras carried out inroads into British territory during 1818-19. to A peace treaty was signed in November 1820. The Ramoses were the hill tribes in the Western Ghats. Discontented with British pattern of administration, their leader Chittur Singh revolted and plundered the region around Satara. The deposition and banishment of Raja Pratap Singh of Satara in September 1839 caused widespread resentment in the area and a chain of disturbances occurred during 1840-41. to A superior British force restored order in the area. The Deccan riots of 1875 highlight the social transformations brought about in the Deccan region of Western India 
during the first five decades of British rule. The Deccan riots were an upshot of excessive government land revenue. The money lenders drew unjust tax and money from the peasants. The sole purpose of the rioters was to obtain and destroy the bonds, decrees and other documents in the possession of the money lenders. The peasant uprising spread to the most of the taluks of the Ahmednagar district. Bhils revolted against the English East India Company in 1817-1819. This series of revolts were led by Sevaram in 1825, 1831 and in 1846. Now let us have a look on some of the movements that took place in the northern India. Wahhabi movement was essentially an Islamic revivalist movement founded by Syed Ahmed of Rai Bareilly during 1820 to 1870 which condemned the western influence on Islam and advocated a return to pure Islam. It transformed into a religious political movement and Syed Ahmed aimed to revive and restore Muslim power in India by overthrowing Sikhs from the Punjab and the British from Bengal. Its important center was at Patna though it had its mission in Hyderabad Madras Bengal UP and Bombay The Kuka movement was a religious political movement founded in 1840 by Bhagat Jawahar Mal in western Punjab Abolition of caste similar discrimination among Sikhs discouraging the eating of meat and taking of alcohol and drugs and encouraging women to step out of seclusion were the demands of the kuka movement after the british took the punjab the movement transformed from a religious purification campaign to a political one the following were the movements in southern india kittur uprising was perhaps one of the first uprisings where in a women leader fought against british raj Shivalinga Rudrasarja the king of Kittur and Rani Chennamma were hairless and had adopted Malla Sarja as heir of Kittur Chennamma's rule on behalf of the minor prince after the death of the king was refused by Thackeray the then collector and political agent of Dharwad Thackeray invaded Kittur when Rani Chennamma opposed this and a battle ensued where hundreds of british soldiers were killed along with thackeray the poly guards revolt when the territories of vijayanagar empire fell in the hands of east india company there arised a conflict between the company officials and the poly guards on the issue of tax collection the poly guards rose up in rebellion and the first poly guard war took place in 1799 between katta bomma nayak and the company collector jackson divan velu thampi's revolt the east india company's harsh conditions due to imposition of subsidiary alliance caused a deep resentment in the state of travancore the ruler of travancore failed to pay the subsidy and fell in arrears A long and bitter struggle ensued. Vellu Thampi was injured and died. Even though dead, he was publicly hanged as an example to the fate of those who rose against the British. Revolt of Raja of Vijayanagaram began in 1765 when the East India Company acquired the territories of Raja of Vijayanagaram which extended over the northern Sarkars. The Raja along with his subjects fought a battle against the British in the year 1794. The Raja died in the battle and subsequently the company offered the estate to his son with reduction in the amount of tribute. Thus we come to understand that uprisings against the British were to restore the lost pride, property and prestige. 
Therefore, rebellion was the only ultimate resort to exhibit self-rights against oppressive rulers. It was to protect holy places, maintain self-dignity, end financial harassment, land grabbing, put an end to unemployment and to avoid religious interference. Moreover, it was also a befitting reply to the local zamindars, money lenders, revenue officials, police, landlords, sahukars and local government functionaries who were hand in glove with the British. Brought to you by Compete India's Jito Bharat, a one-stop internet-based interactive coaching for civil services exams. For more information, log on to www.jitobharat.com.